all, welcome to the first segment of uh, New Game Plus, the newest uh, TV show from these faces you may have seen before. My name's Jason. My name's Tim. And I'm Kirsty. And uh, we're doing things a little bit differently to the way we did in the old show. An old show you may remember at a very familiar channel at a very familiar time <laughs> spot. <laughs> But we are doing things differently, aren't we, Kirsty? We are, we are. We're actually going to do a lot more specialisation with our hosts. So, for example, I'm going to be the master of the mobile platform, looking at iPad and iPhone games. And I'll be covering PC game reviews, hardware reviews, and esports as well. And uh, I'll be covering a lot of our, our, our major reviews and things like that. But we do have the big team coming back as well. So we have Brad in for anime and weeaboo games that none of us really want to play. Uh, we have Donald in for news. Uh, we have Jamie back with a lot of good features. Win Retro Boys, the first episode, oh, yeah. that's going to be great. And we're also doing things a little bit differently. So let's go query quickly through some of the segments that we have. Timmy. Soul Cal 5 review. We have The Darkness 2 and Super Lemonade Factory. We also have an interview with Ben Michael Byrne of the Cranbourne comic series. I told you we were doing things a little bit differently. Let's just get straight into it, yeah? Yeah. yeah. A fighting game franchise that has been around for quite some time now is the Soul series, starting with Soul Edge on the PlayStation 1 and kind of going up from there. Soul Calibur 5 is the latest installment of this, released on the next-gen consoles. Is it really as good as the old Soul series, or have they strayed too far from that and created something that's not quite the same at all? Fight. <laughs> Soul Calibur 5, as I said, it's a fighting game. It's a 3D fighting game by Namco Bandai Entertainment and Project Soul. So you move around and hit each other with swords larger than people can feasibly carry, but we'll, we'll go into stuff of that and we'll get straight into scoring it. Presentation, it looks amazing, but that said, it's not a major improvement from Soul Calibur 4 because Soul Calibur 4 looked amazing. There's not really a bad thing though. I mean, the stages are they're now active, they're really engaging, they change between rounds, which change the mechanics as well, but we'll get into that later. But it just looks really, really nice, and as said, engaging. The sound complements this as well, performed by the Eminent Symphony Orchestra. So it's a fully orchestrated soundtrack, it's all really epic in its grandeur and its approach, and it just, it really, really does, as said before, engage you. That's the idea, that's what it does, and for a fighting game to do that these days is really, really rare. So for presentation, I'm going to give it a 9. Gameplay, as said, it's a 3D fighting game, so you move around a lot, and they've added some new mechanics to kind of change the Soul series up. They've added quick dodging, so you can dodge real quick. They've kind of gone the way of Super Street Fighter. They've added EX moves. They've added Ultras. So they really have changed the game up and sped the game up a lot as well, which it really didn't need. It's got some cool stuff. It's got Ezio Auditore from the Assassin's Creed franchise as its guest character. They've added a bunch more guest characters as well and really changed the roster up because the story is set 17 years in the future. Speaking of the story, the story mode is absolutely terrible. It's been contracted to CyberConnect 2. They did a Sura's Wrath. You'd expect awesome things. It's not. It doesn't make any sense. What the heck is a Malfested anyway? They never explained this, and it's only the main plot point of the story. What are you doing? So we just ignore that and go straight into the other mode. You've got quick battles, which allows you to go against other people who the computer has generated up, including Tekken, Director Harada-san, Filthy Rich, the community manager, and MCC Akane, who Keane being the major player for the Soul Calibur franchise out in France. You've got online as well, and the netcode ain't too bad. You've got the global Coliseum, so you can go against other people in kind of this room thing as well. And there's a really, really awesome and unique lobby system because you can talk and watch a match at the same time with a chat system, which you haven't seen before. So for gameplay, gonna give it an eight. All in all, the game's gonna get an eight. It's an engaging game, and it's fresh to see a fighting game take up an approach that it has to this. They've added some really, really cool things, and they've really brought a fresh, fresh way to the way fighting games should be approached and for any fighting game fan really really should at least take a look at it well that was soul caliber 5 and we'll be discussing that very soon with my good friend 
Timmy, good to see you. Good to see you as well, Jason. Now, you'll be, of course, with us as well, much like the other kids, but you've got a couple of things you have to cover. You've got hardware, you've been doing a bit of esports coverage with yep. some other guys. You've uh, you've got some PC reviews you'll be doing for us always, as well, always. like your bread and butter, because you still can't get you on a console, but <laughs> you'll learn, that's right. And then we've got my favourite segment, and I'm going to start calling it... Uh, the, the idea is we're, gonna, we're meant to be calling it, would you play that? Yep. In, you know, would, yep. Could I convince you to play the game? But I'm going to call it, what would Timmy play? Because... I want you to be subjected to it all because you're young and you seem to have these like misguided notions on music that like you know there's no music in the world outside of like Offspring um, has yeah. to be Aussie has, to be, has Aussie. to be Aussie don't anyway but uh, so I, I, I want to see if the, if we can convince you about some of the games that probably look a bit weirder that you'd play now Soul yeah. Calibur unfortunately is that a hard time but we can definitely talk about Soul Calibur Five now we obviously had a, a bit of an extended play with it while we were in yep. Sydney. You would actually play that because I've actually seen you play that. Yes. Monkey with a stick, best character ever. Monkey with a stick is the best character. Yep. Is that seriously... The... You just poke people and you win. It works. That's not even touching that. But So, <laughs> like, so I mean, I was, I was talking to Brad and Brad was saying his favourite mode was what they do is they'd randomise characters in the character creator and yeah. then bet on them because they just make these random, like, you know, tribal warriors with chef hat. That's always going to end badly. It is. And, and I don't know. Like, I, I think... It's a really fun game. I mean, particularly after number four where it was so cheap. Did you mm. play that? And you yeah. played yeah. Yoda, and unless you just hit him low and then, oh, I don't know. But would Timmy play this game? Would, would yes. Timmy dedicate yes. a lot of time to it, yeah? Oh, maybe not a lot of time, but still. <laughs> not a lot of time. There's, there, only, there's, only, there's only so much you can poke people. Oh, Timmy, jeepers. Anyway, well, this is the first episode. I guess, I guess you're probably missing the Zerg rush of it all. Is that, is that it? No? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> very serious business. You know what? Let's keep going. Thank you for joining me, Timmy, and, and making uh, your presence here really worthwhile. So I'm here today to tell you about Super Lemonade Factory, the latest mobile game offering from Initials Video Games. It's this great little puzzle RPG set in this post-World War II lemonade factory. And the whole point of it is you conquering each different level of the lemonade factory, making friends with the workers, moving crates, and in the end owning this lemonade factory. The great part about this is you control two characters to do that, and each of these characters have their own specialities. So one can jump higher, one can move boxes like a real man, and that adds a little bit of spice to it. There's enough puzzles in here to keep you interested for a while, so the replayability factor is really high. There's also hardcore mode, which is basically just added spikes and smaller platforms. So if you earn enough points, you can have a more difficult experience. The best part about this game though is its music, this great chiptune soundtrack that is actually different for each of the main levels and when you get into hardcore it also gets more hardcore. Heaps of fun, definitely recommend for iPhone more than iPad simply because the controls are really intuitive there. iPad it's just too big, also it doesn't flip on iPad so it'll work better on iPhone but definitely a game worth checking out, lots of replayability and a fantastic soundtrack. I guess it's uh, time for something we haven't done in a long while, Timmy. Yeah, certainly. It's time for Don with the news. Thank news Game Plus. Oh, you mean the News Game Update? Ugh. Thank you, guys. First off, we'll have to cover the past couple of months since we haven't been here for a while, have we? The biggest news, of course, is the R18 legislation that's currently going through the Houses of Parliament. We'll keep you updated as it goes through, and we'll talk about the effect of it all later, because we need a whole block of time for that. In the meantime, though, there were a whole bunch of games announced or given release dates, the most prominent of which being Diablo 3, which has been in development for almost four years now and will finally be out for all you eager mouse-destroying fans on the 15th of May. As well as that, Borderlands 2 got a dubsteppy trailer because, you know, young people, and that will be released on the 21st of September. As well as that, Ubisoft announced that Assassin's Creed 3 is very much a thing. It is set in the US Revolutionary War and will get a release sometime in the holidays this year. Another news as well, Peter Molyneux, the face of Lionhead Studios, is leaving that studio and leaving Microsoft after 15 years. He'll finish off work on, um, fa on Lionhead's latest game, Fable The Journey, and he'll go on to form his own independent studio, 22 Cans. But the biggest hoopla that um, we've seen 
of that that's certainly in the game community anyway is the impact of Kickstarter. Tim Schafer and Double Fine, they decided to fund their latest adventure game through Kickstarter, hoping for just a modest $400,000. They got $3.3 million. Jason, Tim, how do you see this all going through? $3.3 million. It's a lot to make a game. I, I, but this, this is a problem. I, you know, I, I've spoken to you in the past, but you know, and you've said that it's great for those that haven't, you know, won't Definitely. get touched by it. Yeah. yeah, people who can't get funding from publishers it's a great idea but the problem is it's it's double fine i mean it's tim schaefer Uh, if suda 51 can get his games made how can tim schaefer not get his game i guess he i guess he's scared of ea i guess he's scared of a brutal legend scenario where it's quick hide the fact that you've made another part of the game to it but i don't know like don i mean it just it seems um, yeah i I think for games like wasteland 2 just spiritual successes to uh, led into the Fallout series. I think bringing back Wasteland 2 and things like that, stuff that wouldn't get funding from major publishers, is a great idea for Kickstarter. But, I mean, Don, there's other examples where it hasn't worked, isn't there? No, it, no, there are plenty of examples of games that haven't seen the most success from Kickstarter. There's a guy who is trying to fund his own MMO called Your World. He's trying to get a million dollars up for that. He has barely scratched the surface. Um, I, I, if you want to use Kickstarter to get money, you've got to make a game that people want. Well, Have and it, that's true. I, mean, I guess I guess it's like saying, yeah, why, why would you try and make another MMO? It's like, okay, and I'm not going to play the Old Republic. I'm not going to play WoW. I'll play your crappy thing. Look, <laughs> thank you very much, Donald. And I guess it's something we'll have to see how it pans out over the next few months and weeks. And that is everything that's happened in the past three months. Ever. Now, New Game Plus is about doing things a little bit differently. So we've decided to expand a little bit of our coverage and we're going to go into the wonderful world of comic books and I'm joined today by the creator of Cranburn, Mr. Ben Michael Byrne. Fantastic to have you Ben. Great to be here. Now tell tell everybody at home what I guess Cranburn is about. Uh, basically it's a post-apocalypse comic set in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. Nice. So uh, it, it's and it's something I can relate to because I'm, I'm born and bred Dandenong, so I'm you know two 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 uh, suburbs away. Uh, is it, it's obviously got a bit of a Mad Maxi vibe to it. Then I'll take it. Definitely, yeah. uh, he was definitely a big inspiration. I, I've loved it for a long time. Yes, I must say though, as a Nong, you are my sworn enemy. Sorry. All right, chill out. Let's let's not get nasty about it now. So, I mean, so what inspired you to make Cranbourne? I mean, I know I've I've driven through the main street as well, so I can understand a little bit of the inspiration. But what really, I guess, made you say, you know what, this would be the perfect setting for a, a post-apocalyptic comic book. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, I was sort of thinking, what would I do in a zombie attack? And I figured trying to defend my own home from the roof is a bit hard, whereas if you can get a few people to go to a rooftop complex, you have a large area, and it's only a few bottlenecks to defend. And uh, I remember Stephen King said, you know, sort of write what you know. And I thought, well, I know Cranbourne, I know the area. And it's, I'm just I'm into post apoc so those sort of things got together and Cranbourne started to form. There you go. Well, you've obviously got a couple of them printed so far. I mean, any any aspirations for how long you want to go, or just as long as people are interested? Uh, when I was originally looking for a publisher, I had to basically finish it, so I've actually already basically written the whole thing. It's about 550 pages. Right. So that, well, that's still a fair whack, though. I mean, a, mm. a good, good tale of... I mean, is there any other projects you've got in mind afterwards, or...? Uh, it's very tentative at the moment, but there actually is the beginnings of... A uh, working title would be Cranbourne 2150. It would take place about six generations after the current events, but no. that's that's a long way away. Well, Cranbourne actually started life as an online comic book. It, it wasn't a, a print comic first. It, it, tell us about that transition. Uh, originally, I tried to find a publisher. I, I had no luck, but I really, really wanted to tell the story. I wanted to get it out there, so I figured I'd rather tell it, you know, just any way possible. So, you know, the web. Well, I guess in, uh, since you had a bit of a different path, what advice would you give to anyone who is looking to, uh, to write their own comic and tell their story? Do it. Yeah? Really, just, just do it. Don't, say, don't tell people how you're going to do it. Do it and then tell people what you've done. Just, you know, it's, uh, I think actions have a lot more weight than words and if you can put something in people's hands or at least put something like a flash drive in people's hands and say, this is my work, they'll be like, ooh, if you sort of, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, you know, words are cheap, but actions, hmm. Fair enough. But speaking of games, I mean, you're a bit of a gamer yourself? Or? Uh, yes, uh, not quite as much lately, but I have I had a lot of fun recently with Rage. I thought that was well, that's, uh, I guess it's, it's also a good kind of, uh, this is how they do it and this is how I do it kind mm. of. Uh, Aesthetically, comparison. it was, I've, a few times I found myself stopping and just looking around the scenery. That, yeah. And that's just a pity about the rest of it, though. Mm. But anyway, uh, look, I wish you the best of luck with Cranbourne. We'll thank obviously be in touch. If there's any big news, we'll be sure to cover it. Ben, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Love to be here. Best of luck with everything. Thank you. G'day guys. 
G'day, we're here again. Well, not really again, because it's, uh... Well, we're here somewhere. Yeah, Where are we? Yeah, it's a new set, new show. New, new background, a bit of a terrorist home videos I'm be worried about. But... Yeah, I think Al-Qaeda's our new, uh, <laughs> new sponsor. But, uh, you know, you still got the same two old guys here doing what we always do, the same old stuff, and, uh... What are we doing today? We're going to tell you a little bit about why we decided to call the show New Game Plus. New Game Plus. Where'd that come from? Yeah, because in the old days, we, we were old gamers, you know, there was just two or three screens, and yeah, every time you passed it, it was a new game. <laughs> As the Thai gamers would say, same, same, but different. Yeah, you know, the only thing that really leveled up was you. Your skill got better, so you did. But uh, New Game Plus, it's you know, it's, a, it's been around for a little while. It's sort of a new mm. concept, though, in terms of gaming. You know, Chrono Trigger was the mm. first one that used this name. Now, what this does was, you know, you played through the game, and after you finished, if you wanted to continue, you open up a new option, New Game yep. Plus, and... Uh, you could play through, you know, gave you bonuses, like if you had bonus money and levels mm. and that make sort of stuff. Make it a bit harder, though, for you. You could also make it a bit yeah. harder, because in the old days, it kept getting harder and harder. And Well, in the old days, we didn't have New Game Plus, or even before finished, we had a clock, which, of course, would be the score, and you'd play it until you clocked the numbers over and start again. and then they'd start all again. But, really? uh, you know, a lot of games, you know, these days, things like Mass Effect, well, they've, they've sort of changed this New Game Plus, so... You start in one game, you bring your character to the next one, and now the third one as well. So you bring over yeah. choices you made in the first one, come across, and yeah, a next lot of, step. Mm. Yeah, and you know a lot of games are using actually using the name. Like Arkham City has a, a new game plus mo mode again as well, and yeah. uh, a lot of the shooting games, things like uh, there's a small game out there called COD, mm. and uh, what this does is you know you can prestige. So as you play through, all it does is gives you a little star or something next yeah. to your name. Forget, forget Call of Duty and those cod suckers. What you want to know is Mag. He got a veteran level, level seventy, oh. and again, it gives you a when you vet vet over, it gives you a ten percent bonus. So you can you play the game again, but because you start again from the beginning, you get ten uh, percent XP. You get a nice little general star oh, next love to you. Love the general star next to my name because uh, I'm actually oh. feeling feeling like playing a, getting back on seven now. And oh. KGB, let's go. Okay, it's good to be okay. <laughs> Are you all right, my girl? It was nothing, Uncle. Just a bad dream. We should be getting you home. But there's still work to be done. If these translations are correct, <laughs> the powers of hell could already be on the move. The world must be told of the coming darkness. You do believe me, don't you, Leah? It has begun. Leave it, Uncle. It's not important. May 15, be looking out for that. May 15. No, nah, uh, you PC kids and you're crazy. The other... It's Mac as well. Come on, you've got to play <laughs> I know, it. I, Diablo I, I will, I will. But for me, it's a lot of clicking. It's Actually, a funny thing was brought to my attention earlier. The same day that Diablo 3 comes out, the Game of Thrones game comes out. Not the best of ideas. Surely they could. I Not mean, maybe that's what ideas. Diablo did. Maybe they're like, no, this is our game. You, you all need to back off. Anyway, hopefully it's good. Big story, we'll no doubt we'll have some big coverage for it, yeah, but definitely. I guess let's keep going again. Now the Darkness One is, for my money, perhaps the most visceral and engaging storytelling experience, uh, particularly when it comes to first person games. It, it doesn't necessarily break into cutscenes all that often, everything is experienced as you would experience it in first person, and I think it really set the trends for how stories are told in games. Yeah, fair enough, you went around shooting lights for half the game, so perhaps the gameplay mechanics were a bit missing. 
So then Darkness 2 comes out to, I must say, not a lot of fanfare. There wasn't really much made of it. It came out really early in the year. It was the biggest title amongst, uh, like it was definitely the biggest fish in the smallest pond. Uh, and it was a cell shaded, which again turns a lot of people off because they go from this realistic graphics to this completely different track. And yet, I think somehow people have really missed out on what is perhaps one of the best games at the start of this year. And then you, you, you might think that inheriting superpowers would, would be pretty cool for Jackie, you, you know, being in the business of killing people and all. But, and if not for the demon living inside of him, you'd be right. See, the darkness it didn't just make Jackie stronger, it, it, it made him a god. But only when lights were out. Now, I guess the biggest thing we'll cover is that presentation, the cell shaded look. I guess works. It is based on a comic book after all, and the last one, while it was realistic graphics, it was realistic graphics. It was what it was. It still looked reasonably good, particularly for its day, and it definitely still told the story. But the 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 the, the new way that they've done it with the cell shading is a little bit different, and it it works in the sense that you still feel attached to the story, you still feel attached to everybody that's involved with it. All of the the up and down moments uh, like really drag you in with it, and some of the scenes later on, particularly when the darkness starts to take a hold of Jackie, is really really well done. And, and the sound as well. I mean, obviously Mike Patton's back to do the voice work, but even some of the other voice actors. And while they are pretty much stereotypical mooks, you know, oh, oh, you know, we're, we're definitely the, you know, the typical mobsters. They really, I guess, have a little bit more depth than you would have thought. So I guess presentation, the way that they've actually gone out of the way to, to present it, and while the cell shading does lose a little bit of that graphical prowess. I guess, it still works really well in conveying the story itself. So I'll give the presentation an 8 out of 10. Embrace the diabolous Jackie. And alas, I free! Oh, fuck! What the hell is that? Now the gameplay, and this is probably the biggest, I guess, improvement on the last one. It still has a lot of those key storytelling elements, like there's a lot of the, the story told through those first person experiences. The shooting's been improved, it's still not great, but much like Bioshock before it, you can still have a fantastic first person experience without perhaps the tighter shooter mechanics. Uh, the, the way that the, the tech tree works now works really well in that, and I guess instead of you know splitting their efforts between multiplayer and this, there is multiplayer, but it, it's run, I guess, more of a, an integrated experience. They've got the Vendettas mode. They've also got uh, like the, the way that you control, I can't remember what they're called, the little darkling bastards, I keep forgetting what their name is, but there's only one in this one, and it actually works really well to become part of the story. And it, it just, again, it flows fantastically. So the gameplay, much improved from the past. Again, the shooter mechanics probably aren't 100%, but works functionally, works well, and it really helps to tell that story, eight out of 10. So I think finally, I guess this is where we, we play with the score a little bit, and I won't. I think an eight really does sum up where this game's coming from. It's a fantastic experience, perhaps or potentially one of the games of the year so early on, and I think again, it really has that, that, that core like storytelling experience that really makes the darkness stand out from a lot of first person games. The biggest things to note are Mike Patton's back and does a great job, but I think the appeal of the darkness is starting to wear a bit thin. The story definitely continues on for a third one, but there's also multiple branching paths. So if you didn't get the ending you think should be the ending, maybe go back and play it again and see. It does have a new game plus mode and that's always the best mode. So definitely Darkness 2, eight out of 10, fantastic game, definitely game of the year contention this early on. And uh, I really recommend having a look at it if you are interested in storytelling in the first person. Well, that was our review for The Darkness 2. Now, Timmy, did you ever get around to playing The Darkness 1? I did play it a bit, up to the To Kill a Mockingbird, watching it on the TV. Which uh, goes to my point about it being such good storytelling. Yeah. Because uh, I, it was one of those scenes that you didn't even know about. You just, you know, you happen to sit there with your girlfriend and, oh, I'm just enjoying this moment. You can look down at her and blah, blah, blah. And then, bloop, brilliant. Like, yeah. just the way it didn't break character, it didn't break scene, it didn't break anything, it just did it. So, Have you played Darkness 2 yet? Darkness 2, I got to play it, insert coins in Sydney, and it was a lot of fun when I tried it out. Well, I mean, it also helped that everyone was pretty yeah. drunk at the event as well. It doesn't, certainly doesn't hurt, but the cell shading, does it really bother you that much? Not that much, but it does turn the initial, like, I want to buy off. But Because I find that a lot. I understand that cell shading doesn't make it look as realistic, yeah. but you're talking about a guy who has giant black demon tentacles coming out of his back. How realistic do you want it? Uh, yeah. Maybe that's just me being... Need realism in games. Need realism. Well, it's on PC, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, then pick it up. No excuse. No, no excuse. No excuse. Look, end of our episode. Yeah. Very, very glad to be here at the at the end of the first show. It's all all here and all done. 
but lot to look forward to next week. A as lot well. to look forward to. But in the meantime, we should cover the fact that we have, you know, obviously brand new Facebooks and yes, brand new Twitters yes. and whatever the kids are into nowadays. So like us at uh, facebook.com forward slash new game plus TV. I'm told we are at, at new game plus TV on Twitter. Whatever that means. I don't know with these Twitter kids. And obviously newgameplus.tv for yes. the website as well. Where you'll find all full episodes, reviews, segments, and even some extra stuff on the website. And, we're, and we've obviously got news blogs, things like that. It's going to be yeah. great. A few of our collaborators looking forward to it. It's going to be big. You're excited, Tim. Very excited. I'm very excited. I'm excited. Let's not do that. That's a bit too Aussie. Uh, <laughs> but thank you everyone for joining us. We will see you guys next week. And uh, I guess stay classy. <laughs>